All right, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Steve Belogan. I am an engineer on the UNO platform team, and I am excited today to get to share with you how you can start building beautiful UNO applications using the powerful styling capabilities from the platform, as well as ready to ship themes that can transform your app with just a click of a button and a few lines of XAML. So the first thing that I wanna do is sort of give us a peek under the hood of how, so how we can so we can all see how styling works in the UNO platform and what it means to be able to deliver pixel perfect applications while still being truly native to whichever platform that you're targeting. Next, uh, we'll dive into the world of UNO themes and we can take a look at some of the beautiful collections of styles that we provide either out of the box or as a secondary NuGet package. And lastly, uh, I will take a look at how you can customize these themes to match your own branding, as well as building your own theme from scratch. So let's first take a look at how styling works on the UNO platform um, and what tools are available to you in order to change the look of your app to whatever you like. When we talk about being able to deliver pixel perfect styles while still maintaining the native richness of whichever platform that you're targeting, what we're talking about is the use of templated controls or lookless controls. So now, as you know, UNO platform is taking those WinUI APIs and bridging them over into completely new territory by having those same APIs work across many different platform operating systems and devices. And so as a result of this effort, it, would, it means that we brought over WinUI's extremely powerful styling engine and made it available on each of our supported platforms. And the holy grail of this styling engine is the idea of templated controls. Templated controls are UI elements that have a visual structure and a visual behavior that can be changed and edited using XAML. So we all know that uh, controls have many properties such as background, foreground, font family, etc. And you can set those to specify different aspects of your control's appearance. But the changes that you make with these properties are limited. You can specify additional customizations by creating a template using the control template class. So when you create a control template, you're actually combining lower level framework element objects to build up a single control. So within that template, you get down to the nitty gritty details. You get down to those primitive shapes and elements whose combination of objects make up a control's visual structure. So looking here on the right, um, we see we have three different controls that have had very different templates applied to them. When you dig down here into this uh, you know, the toggle switch, the progress ring, the button that we have here, when you dig down, what you're actually looking at are the native controls for whichever platform that you're building for. Uh, but thanks to control templating, they look and they feel vastly different from one another. So we can look at a small example. If we open up, let's go on iOS. This is an Uno app on iOS. Let me uncheck these. So we'll zoom in. This is basically just two checkboxes. So the default checkbox with the style that's coming straight from the Uno platform and a style checkbox that, that uh, I edited. Um, and you can see, you know, it's a, it has a circle for the, the check area rather than this rounded off square. And if we were to check it and zoom back in, you'd see that, you know, we get the normal check glyph for the default one and we got a nice little heart icon um, for my styled one instead, just to make it interesting. So if we were to look at first at the XAML that makes up that page, we would see that we have two checkboxes defined in our XAML. So we have the default checkbox using the default style. You don't have to set anything on this one. And then we have our style checkbox that has a style set with that uh, set to my checkbox style. So if we drill down into my checkbox style, we'll see it here. You see, we're defining our my checkbox style here. We're saying, okay, the, my target type is checkbox and I'm setting this template to an instance of a control template. And so what's happening here is we're talking to the, the, the native platform and saying, okay, provide to me your native checkbox from within your system with all its functionalities and behaviors and, and richness, uh, but also provide to me a blank canvas on top of that control so I can draw that control however I like. So I can do whatever I want to, to the visual structure of that control, but you're still going to be a native checkbox for the system. So you'll see here um, where we're making up, we have uh, framework elements that make up the visual structure using grids, using rectangles, using font icons. And the only real change that I made 
uh, basically was uh, making a change to the radii of uh, the, the, the surrounding grid and the rectangle that fills that, that, uh, that circle for the background, that blue fill, um, as well as changes to the font icon. So you can see I have the radius here to make it circular. And if I zoom into the font icon, I have changed the glyph of this font icon to be that check, to be from that check to a heart glyph. And those are the only changes really I made. So this is very small tweaks to a control template, but you can go crazy and do whatever you want within this template and make your, um, make your control look however you'd like. Next, I want us to look at some of the collections of styles and brushes and resources that we have compiled together into what we call themes. So themes are an easy way to apply a whole design system to your application in just a few clicks and again, a couple lines of XAML. So the first theme that I wanted to look at is the Fluent theme. This is the default WinUI theme that comes baked into the Uno platform. So whenever you do a file new Uno project from within Visual Studio, you will start off with this theme being the default for your controls. All that's needed for you to start building using the Fluent theme is a simple line in your app XAML that's initializing the XAML controls resources from the MUX namespace that's, uh, that's shown here. So we're just initializing the XAML control resources and the Fluent theme is bootstrapped and, and ready to go. And that's actually done for you by default in the Visual Studio app templates already. Um, so you don't even have to worry about that once you do a file new Uno project. Um, and these are also um, using, so it's the default theme, it's just this one line setup. And these are also, uh, they have the capability of having those uh, V2.5 styles, I believe, and the 2.6 Sun Valley styles for for Fluent that have the nice, you know, rounded corner radiuses and stuff like that. So if we wanted to take a look at some Fluent stuff, we can go to the Uno Gallery. And so this is the Uno Gallery. So if you've never seen the Uno Gallery before or know what it is, it's a it's a it's an application written on the Uno platform. So it's written all in XAML um, and it targets all our supported platforms. And right now what we're looking at is that Uno application running natively in the browser using WebAssembly. So you can see here that I, um, we have multiple themes that we'll get into in a second, but right now I'm selected on the Fluent one. And it highlights you know, some, of the, um, some of the Fluent controls, the styles for the controls that are available to you in Uno platform. So text boxes, check boxes that we just saw before, buttons. Um, if we wanted to look quickly at the Fluent palette, so the Fluent palette is basically just describing to you all the resource brushes that you have available to you from within the Fluent theme. So all your accent colors, all your base colors, all your Chrome colors, error text colors, anything you, you can think of that comes from the Fluent theme is here. Um, and it's all adaptable to light and dark mode. Um, you know, it, 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 it uh, changes its variance to whatever you, you set the theme as. So if we look at like a simple control, something like button, like we just saw before, You'd see, you know, it's the it's the default fluent button that we all know and love, and and it looks familiar to all of us, and it's using those two point six Sun Valley styles right now. And if we wanted to look at something a little bit more complex, we can go to something like the calendar view. And so this is the WinUI calendar view, uh, the one that you're familiar with, you know, using in WinUI applications, but it's running now natively on the browser, and it has that fluent theme. Uh, applied to it and it's uh, you know it works just as you would expect and it just it looks familiar it is it's following that fluent theme to the T um, using control templates and you know everything's here for you to use um, the next theme that I wanted to highlight is the Uno material theme so Uno material provides a large set of controls brushes colors resources and components all following materials design guidelines uh, it supports light and dark colors out of the box. Uh, there's even the ability to override and customize those colors as you wish. And we'll dig, that, dig down into that in a second. Um, it also has support for things like, you know, the famous ripple effect or drop shadows. And this, just like all of our themes, works across all platforms, all form factors, everywhere. So for Uno Material, we package this outside of the Uno UI package itself. So this is available as a NuGet package that you can add to your project. Simply install the package and initialize the material components in your app XAML, similar to Fluent. Uh, you see here, 
uh, above here, we have that fluent initialization with the XAML controls resources. And here we are initializing the material colors and the material resources. And that's all you have to do. And the material theme is now bootstrapped in your app and ready to go. So if we go back to the gallery, we can go to uh, the material palette. <clears throat> and so this is uh, the palette now for material instead of fluent. So you have your primary colors, your secondary colors, your variants for light and dark, and you'll see that they adapt between the different themes of your application, um, as well as all the background, the surface colors, the on primaries, the on secondaries, the on background brushes. So all these, all these uh, material design guidelines, design guideline uh, notions for your colors are all here available to you as brush resources. So if we go again to a simple control, and this time we'll switch over to material, you'll see that it looks quite different. So we have, you know, we have our contain buttons, we have our outline buttons, um, and I believe we have text buttons down here. And, you know, they're all able to be clicked and they're all interactable. They have, they have that, that nice um, ripple effect on them as you go. And we also support uh, more complex material controls and some controls that are specific to material and may not have an exact WinUI equivalent. Um, so we have the material card, say, which is built up of different framework elements from, from WinUI, but we built a card using these controls and using that nice ripple. So we have an elevated card, we have those outline cards, we, uh, they're actionable, they contain each individual you know, ripple effects. So everything is there for you, ready to use. And the elevated ones do have a, a nice shadow around the edge. So um, that's just an example of a more complex material control that's available to you out of this package. And so the latest addition to our themes offering is Uno Cupertino. So the Cupertino theme allows you to style your application following Apple's human interface design guidelines and gives your app that familiar iOS, macOS type of look and feel. And so it's the same exact setup as you would for uh, Uno Material. You simply install the package and add those two lines to your app XAML and you're up and running. And so you see it looks very similar, uh, except now we are uh, initializing Cupertino colors and Cupertino resources instead of material colors and material resources. And you get these nice controls here. We'll take a look at the, at the gallery again. This time we'll look at the Cupertino side of it. And so again, you have this palette that's a bit, I'm really driving home these palettes because we're going to get into customizing colors in a little bit. Um, but you have these palettes here. So the, the main system colors, the main, the variations for the, your gray schemes, uh, control colors, and once again, adaptable to light and dark mode, um, all available to you as brushes resources from within the package. And so if we go to, um, I don't know, I guess button, and then we go to Cupertino, you'll see you'll have that familiar Cupertino iOS, macOS type of default text button, as well as a contain button as well. Uh, if we go to something a little bit more complex, like the calendar view, you see it's that same calendar view that, uh, that we know coming from, from WinUI, so it's, it's running in the browser natively, but now it has um, sort of a, a iOS, macOS type of look and feel to it, so it has that nice Cupertino blue on it, it has the nice icons, that are matching more of the, the human interface design guideline icons. And it uh, works just as you would expect. And you know, everything is, uh, everything is there. It just has more of a Cupertino feel to it. And if we wanted to look at something a little more fun, I guess, not, I don't know if it's fun, but it's fun for me. Um, the progress ring, I think is really cool. So if we go back to Fluent for a second, this, you'll see this is the, you know, the progress ring that we all know. And it's drastically different for Cupertino. So it has that UI activity indicator type of look to it. And it's very familiar if, if you're familiar with, you know, iOS or macOS type of, type of look and feel. Um, and so that's the power of control templating. We can make this control look however we like. And so we made it have this Cupertino theme. And I think it looks pretty good. Finally, I want to bring us a little deeper into uh, the themes and styling in general to see how you can really make your application match your brand, or perhaps have your own theme that you'd like to build upon. So the first step into customization, if you're wanting to build off one of our themes, is the color palette override. So when you initialize the colors and resources for either Material or Cupertino in your app XAML, 
you have the option to define an override source for your color palette. So let's take a look back to where we saw those color palettes in the gallery. Actually, yeah, I'll show you in a second. Uh, so those colors are all drawn by brushes defined in the Uno Material and Uno Cupertino packages. These brushes get their specific colors from what we call the color palette. So this is simply a resource dictionary of base colors that will be the stepping stone to defining your application's unique coloring and unique brand. So uh, once again, if we go back to those, to those palettes, let's choose the material one. This, these are um, being painted on this screen now by the material brushes coming from the material uh, library, but they're actually based off of that color palette. So the brushes will reach out to the color palette and say, hey, give me the color for uh, the primary color for this application, and I will, I will draw that color out. And so the same idea for the variants and the light and dark, the secondary colors, all that stuff. Um, and so if you ever wanted to customize those things, we could take a look at a, at a small um, Android sample. So right now, oops, right now um, we have a little Android application running now that has the slider in all three themes and buttons in all three themes. And you'll see here that this right here is the material slider and this right here is the material button. And so it doesn't have that purple primary color like we were just looking at in the palette. Uh, yes, in the palette in the gallery. Because what happened here is I overrode those color palette uh, values to be sort of a greenish and I overrode the background palette color to be sort of a, a yellowy type of look to it. So how you do that, if we look in the code, Actually, first we'll start in the app XAML. So you'll see here that we have material colors being initialized and material resources. And then what's happening for material colors is that I'm saying, hey, okay, go to this resource dictionary and override the color palette with whatever values I put in that resource dictionary. And so if I were to scroll over a little bit, that source is coming from my application and it's called the material override XAML. So if we go into Material Override XAML, you will see a theme dictionary here for both light and dark. And I, I picked some colors that I wanted to override. If I don't override some of them, they'll take the default ones that are within Material. Um, but you see here that that primary color, oops, let me unzoom, that primary color here um, that we saw as the in the outline button is that green that I defined here. And that background color, it's a little bit harder to see, uh, but it is that yellowish type of look that you saw in the background of that button. So you have the option to override all of these, none of them, some of them, um, and it's all available for you and the brushes will adapt accordingly and you can easily use this to, to follow your branding for your application for whatever it is. Of course, you always have the option to build your own theme and your own design. So nothing is stopping you from creating your own theme dictionaries to define uh, your light and your dark resources. Uh, you can go ahead and define new styles and re-template any controls that you like and package that up into a theme. Um, thanks to the powerful styling engine of WinUI and the wide breadth of platforms of, uh, that, that Uno provides, you truly have a blank canvas spanning multiple operating systems and device form factors. And so we would love to see what kind of styles and themes that you can come up with whether it's just a funky button that you created or you want to take a stab at creating the next Material U theme for Uno, uh, whatever it is, we would love to see it and we would love to share it. So I'm going to drive home once again, whether you want to restyle a whole application or just a single control, Uno and WinUI's styling engine gives you complete control down to the very last pixel while still providing you with the native functionality on any platform. And so with that, I would like to thank you for your time and get out there, get creating and definitely share with us anything that, uh, that you make. We would love to see it.